And when you think of West Texas A&M University, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Maybe the town of Canyon, Old Main, or the Eternal Flame? All those things sound good, but what about names like Terry Funk, Dusty Rhodes, or Bruiser Brody? KMR Local 4's Jack Kessler uncovers a piece of High Plains history of some of the legendary names that walked the hallowed halls of WT. On the football field of West Texas State University, several legends would be made and a bond created that would extend off the field and into One, two, three, the ring. I told people this. I said, I said, I said, WD has probably graduated more professional wrestlers <laughs> than professional football players. But all of that was largely due to the influence of a very well-known family in the wrestling industry, and that's the Funks. Throughout the 1960s and into the 1970s, members of this group dominated the gridiron on the high plains, starting with Dory Funk Jr. in 1959 and ending with the group of Tully Blanchard, Ted DiBiase, Kelly Kaninsky, and Merced Salis, a.k.a. Tito Santana, in the mid-1970s. Eight of the 11 members who once played football for WTSU are in some sort of Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Stan Hansen says he takes pride in being a part of that group from WTSU. The wrestling business back then was uh, not so much uh, entertainment, but much more physical. And I think the, the guys from West Texas that came out, the Funks, were very particular in who they got into the business and that you had to be a physical type of guy. And uh, so there were a lot of <laughs> – everybody was really physical, and I think that uh, there was a camaraderie that, you know, that we all developed knowing that we – came through West Texas because it was not an easy road. Local wrestling legend Terry Funk says many of the players who came to West Texas State University came for football, but stayed for the wrestling. They're all great athletes. Very, very good athletes. They came to Amarillo. Well, they came to West Texas for that reason. And they wound up being wrestlers. They wound up doing very good in the profession. Many of these Hall of Famers would go on to collide in the ring in various promotions across the different wrestling territories. Back in the day, New York and places like that weren't that big. You didn't have one guy controlling the wrestling world, basically. You had the different promoters. You had uh, Tennessee, you had Florida. Just everywhere had a wrestling promotion, and it was old school family entertainment. And fun. Funk says even as the territories faded and bigger promotions took over, Amarillo still remained a hub for wrestling. And the million dollar man Ted DiBiase adds the legacy each man left behind is everlasting. If you look at the guys uh, that came out of West Texas State in terms of where they were in wrestling, you know, all of them just, they didn't just become wrestlers, they became stars. In Amarillo, Jack Kessler, KMR Local 4 News. There's a lot of star power in that story <laughs> a lot right of star there. Power in that Not story. only uh, is the Funk family in several Hall of Fames around the world, but they're also in the Panhandle Sports Hall of Fame. And Dory Funk Jr. and Terry Funk are also part of the Hall of Champions down at WT. To find out more about this story, to see more photos of the players around their time at WTSU, along with the story of legendary Texas deathmatch that took place here in Amarillo between Dory Funk Sr. and Iron Mike DiBiase. That is a story you do not want to miss. Pretty incredible. MyHighPlains.com.